Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Street Fighter documentary. I'm delighted to be joined by Kyle Herbert, who played the role of Ryu in uh, Street Fighter. Um, vice the role of Ryu in Street Fighter. Uh, Kyle, Street Fighter, uh, an iconic sort of fighting sort of franchise uh, back in the 90s, developed by Capcom. One of its uh, itself and Mortal Kombat, I suppose, were the two ultimate fighting games, the button bashing games in arcade centers all across the world uh, growing up. Uh, what were your memories? Did you, were you a sort of uh, a gamer growing up or an arcade guy? Had you heard a Street Fighter or what was your first knowledge of it? Well, um, I am 51 years old, so I definitely grew up in the infancy of the video game industry. So I first had an Atari 2600, and I would definitely go to the arcade. I dropped a lot of quarters as we used the currency, and then the tokens. we trade in money and get arcade tokens to play. And I didn't play a lot of Street Fighter, to be honest, because I was so terrible at it. But <laughs> but I did notice that it was wildly popular, enough to get all, tons of sequels and everything, and I knew what a big deal it was. So it's 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 pretty like I my jaw dropped whenever I found out I got to audition for that. But yeah, I've been a, I've been a gamer my whole life. I've been a console gamer. Uh, I had Atari, ColecoVision. I had uh, Nintendo. Uh, I had oh golly, Sega Dreamcast, and then Playstations all the way up, and Xbox all up to the recent one, and then yeah, Vita, PSP, DS. Switch, I, I've been all there. No Game Boy Color, though, but yeah. And uh, Kyle, in terms of uh, Street Fighter, we know back in the 90s it released a, a, a caption movie. Capcom tried to develop it from the fighting crossover into the movie scene, and an awful lot of mo big money was spent in terms of its budget, in terms of Jean-Claude Van Damme and the late, great Raul Julie. And uh, it probably, at the time, it probably didn't have a great sort of reaction people thought it was a bit sort of campy a sort of a bit sort of two family sort of orientated while it's big rival at the time mortal Kombat, it's movie that came out in 1995 it was a martial arts so it went down to great success uh popular worldwide and uh in terms of street fighter uh it capcom sort of sort of went backwards then, they sort of went back into the video game sort of franchise. Do you think it sort of scared them, that sort of reaction that time, that they tried to make that big push into the movie scene industry and uh, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with its great rival, Mortal Kombat, in terms of that? And obviously it seemed like they, they lost that battle. Yeah, it's uh, going back then, you didn't have a lot of precedent set on uh, knowing the success of video game adaptations into movies. So it was like new territory. And I can see that uh, Hollywood saw dollar signs, as they do. They're a business, and they're like, hey, what's popular now? Hey, th let's break into a new genre. Let's, let's go into that. And this is all... You know, you had Super Mario Brothers come out and, and completely tank. And then, you know, Mortal Kombat did really well at the enough to have a sequel and a TV series and, and everything like that. And, and Street Fighter. Yeah, it, it's a uh, hmm. I found it to be very campy, um, but not a not a true, true, uh, faithful adaptation, I guess, of the source material. I mean, I know there have been anime series over the time. There was a cartoon series in America, uh, even in the 80s or early 90s, too. So um, they have tried multiple times, and um, I think it's missed the mark there. But uh, I think by staying tried and true to its original, you know, we are a video game, stick to your medium. It's like, okay, all right, I, I like this. And the, the games have amped up in quality in terms of gameplay and graphics and... You know, um, maybe I think it might be wise to stay away from the live action adaptation. And uh, Kyle, in terms of uh, a voice over actor, um, you voiced the role Ryu in Street Fighter. How did that uh, come about? Was it something that your agent they said, listen, um, Capcom are releasing this video game, Top Secret. We want you to go in and maybe show a voice a few sort of roles, the characters for, for that. And uh, 
how did you have actually any drawings to go about or go by did you know who you'd be voicing for or were you able to do a bit of research on the character and maybe look back on previous adaptations of him or was it completely in the dark for you well, uh, with New Generation Studios here in Los Angeles, I had been recording different projects. We did anime dubs, and I worked on uh, worked with multiple directors and everything. So I was on their casting, their talent roster, as it were. So when Capcom uh, hired them to be the studio to record the English dub of the game, uh, I was called in. And I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Normally we sign those at the end of the session or, or all that. But this was so top secret that I had to sign it just to see the audition script. And um, the head of the studio says, all right, I, I went there in person to the studio. And he says, here's a three ring binder uh, with all the characters. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Don't freak out. You'll probably recognize it. So just pick whoever you want to read for. So I open up the binder and I immediately go, oh, it's like, all right, calm down, calm down. It's like, I know what this is. I know what this is. And everyone had like fake names, you know, like this is John and, you know, <laughs> all these weird things. So I, I originally picked Ryu and I do believe I read for Ken, M. Bison, E. Honda and El Fuerte, who was a new character in Street Fighter 4 back in 2008, uh, and this was a good year before it came out. So uh, that, that was pretty wild. I, I did the best I could. And as a voice actor, I know not to just hold on to it and woulda, coulda, shoulda. And I really, you know, you just lose your, your energy. So you go in and give 110% and then move on with your day. That's what I did. And then a month or two later, the director, who also voices Blanca, says, Hey, um, you know, congrats. I'm like, for what? It's like, you got the main dude. I'm like, no way. It's like, I freaked out. Uh, so that, that was amazing. That was, that was, that was killer. And I, I went into the studio and we had multiple sessions. Uh, golly, maybe 12 hours or so total uh, over multiple sessions with lots of screaming, obviously. Hello, Ken! Sure you again! That's what my kids are Had all that stuff. And I had to down a bunch of Chinese cough syrup, which is the, which is the uh, magic, uh, magic formula for helping you not destroy your vocal cords, believe it or not. We learned that from the voice of the animated Hulk, Fred Tatashore. He said he calls it Hulk juice. And it's like, this has been a godsend for all voice actors who do lots of screaming in fighting games and RPGs and first-person shooters and whatnot. So that's definitely helped get me through all of that. And it's just been a blessing to watch this, the popularity grow uh, of the series and the crossovers with Marvel vs. Capcom and then even Smash Brothers. And uh, Kyle, you mentioned it was sort of top secret. So did you actually know before you arrived in the, the studio that it was Street Fighter or not? You just knew that you're coming in to voice over for a certain sort of game. You'd actually, until you opened up the script and you saw it was, I know what this was. And obviously then, obviously you have really no time to prepare. You saw Ryu. So obviously you were probably going to the studio that day, not knowing that you had to sort of voice an Asian character. So to come up with that sort of vice of the top and just to take training to or now I mentioned something like that you probably need a day or two of preparation because it's very different than your British or your American or your Australian sort of character well they did mention that we don't want to go for accents even though it did originate in Japan they said we're, we're gonna get even though you know he, he sounds like he's obviously from Japan uh, but we went with just a, a, a neutral North American accent for that, and um, yeah, with the with the voice acting process, we're rarely given time to look over material. We don't have access to the material. They're worried about it getting out and everything. So no, I I did not know what game I was going to audition for. I just knew it was a a big franchise. Uh, the head of the studio kind of teased that, but he's nothing nothing beyond that. And, and we're also as voice actors, you have to have a good sense of improv thinking on your feet, being able to absorb little bullet point information about the uh, the character. So I didn't have like paragraphs of history or I couldn't look on Wikipedia and, 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 and get all that. I got the absolute bare minimum about what his journey is and, and, and the character 
attributes and everything. And so I just got to make some decisions mentally, go in there and commit to a performance. And if the director of the audition likes what I'm doing with it, it maybe throws me a curveball. So here, try it more like this. Try it faster, slower, higher pitched, lower pitched. And we kind of work together to kind of finagle a, a performance that way. But uh, what I gave them in the audition is what they went with. And uh, Kyle, in terms of that, uh, did you have any animated drawings to go on or any sort of thing where you could probably determine the size, the, the look, uh, the sort of, and give you an idea what sort of tone that you wanted to put on it? They put an age range, a generic age range, you know, and he's probably in between his 30s and 40s. Uh, there was one picture to go by. Uh, and I think it was like a, a like a comic book style artist rendering, I believe. There was no graphics uh, really done at the time of the audition, and uh, the lip sync uh, for the session was not very. Uh, we weren't given the materials ahead of time, so that's why if you play Street Fighter Four and watch all the cutscenes, the lip sync rarely matches. It's it's. It's not because we didn't try. It's because we didn't have access to the video materials in order to do that. So instead, we had to match the timing of the Japanese audio, which is yeah. which is typical for Japanese games. Yeah. And I suppose, uh, Kyle, I suppose lastly for me, uh, in terms of being involved in the Street Fighter uh, franchise, the sort of universe, uh, when you voice one character and that, obviously you don't necessarily have to be that same character for the next video game. You could be a different sort of character. Obviously you can voice over different sort of roles in animated series. So you can obviously stay involved with that sort of franchise for a long time to come. And once you're the voice of someone as the same video games that, the Ryu, you could be the vice again in two years' time for a new edition for a video game. So long. So there's great sort of longevity towards a certain franchise if, it, if, if it's successful and it, in terms of the video game industry or an animated series, if it keeps going and going, it, all, it can lead to recurring roles every two, two or three years. Yeah, we, we like job security because voice acting is a self-employment type of uh, job, your contract, so you only get paid if you work. Um, so I had a feeling that, that I would be revisiting this character every so many years or whatever for the next iteration. And as long as, you know, the reviews were there, the fan support was definitely there. Uh, I think studios are, are very uh, hip to know the pulse of what the people want, especially in a social media age, that it, it doesn't make sense to change a cast. You know, the fans get very upset about that. It's like, no, blankety blank is the voice of it. You know, David Hayter is solid snake, not Kiefer Sutherland, you know. And all that it could get controversial sometimes. But luckily, uh, we have been the cast pretty consistently, too. Uh, ever since uh, Street Fighter 4. Uh, on that note, Kyle Herbert, a pleasure talking to you this evening to relive your memories of playing, uh, voicing the role of uh, Ryu in Street Fighter. No many doubt more successful roles to come in the next uh, decade or so. Kyle, an absolute pleasure and uh, stay safe and take care in these troublesome times. Right back at, right back at you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kyle. Okay.